Shalom, shalom to all the listeners. My name is Chris Ndikumana. You're listening to the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Friday, and I want to share the Word of God with you. This is a verse I want to share with you, and I really want you to learn from it. Many people still don't understand why we urge you to pray and to invite God in your life. Some people claim that Satan no longer has any power. But that's not true. I want you to know that Satan has power. It's true that Jesus has more power than him, but it doesn't mean that Satan no longer has any power. A time will come when Satan will be bound and he won't be able to do anything against the children of God. He will be bound for a thousand years, but that time hasn't come yet. We need to understand that the word of God says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, that we know that we are God's people and the whole world is under the control of the evil one or Satan. I want you to read this verse very carefully and I want you to understand that it doesn't talk about Africa only or Asia only or America. No, this applies to the whole world. It applies to all the 200 plus countries of the world. They are all under the power of Satan. I want you to understand that Satan's power is everywhere in the world. That's why we see an abundance of sin everywhere. I don't know if you've noticed that there are way more sinners than righteous people. There are many sins across the world. There is an abundance of murders and lies and stealing and rapes and abortions. There are so many evil things. The world is filled with the sin because of the power of Satan. The whole world is under the power of Satan. But the good news is that John also wrote in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 that the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. I hope that you understand how very encouraging these two verses are. The first verse says that the whole world is under the power of Satan. It means that Satan has control on the earth. He rules the earth. He uses people from every nation. But the last verse we just read gives us hope because it clearly shows that even though the world is under the power of Satan, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth to destroy the works of Satan. Even though Satan has power over the whole world, even though he has power over families and the economy and many other other things in this world, there is someone called Jesus Christ who is more powerful than Satan. So I want to encourage all the listeners who are bound by sin. Maybe you are bound by sexual immorality or many other things. Some of you want to be saved. You want to pray to God, but you can't because you are bound by drugs. Some listeners are bound by drugs. Some are bound by tobacco and you are unable to quit. Some people feel like they can no longer be forgiven but I want you to know that Satan is lying to you. God can forgive you right now because Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Whether you are bound by alcohol or drugs or lying or jealousy, you need to come to Jesus just as you are. You need to abandon your sinful ways. You need to repent from your sins. You must turn your back on your sins and you must turn to the one who came to destroy the works of Satan. Yes, you may still be bound. Maybe you are bound by pornography or masturbation or hate or jealousy but you can bring all those things that are binding you before God. Get on your knees and call on Jesus because Jesus came with the power to destroy all the works of Satan. If you call on him, he will come to you right where you are. He will come into your life and you will be able to receive forgiveness and to start a new life of righteousness. Call on him and he will come. If you need assistance from a man of God, you can give us a WhatsApp call at plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven now time to continue our study of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians and we stay in chapter 15. At the end of yesterday's podcast, we saw in the word of God that when we rise from the dead, we will have a new body. We saw in verse 35 that some people are wondering what kind of body we will have when we rise from the dead. And Paul provides a clear explanation about this in verse 40. He says that there are two different types of bodies. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. Your 
Your current body will completely decay when you die. But when you rise from the dead, you will have a new body that will be different from your current body. When Jesus was living in this world, he had an earthly body. But once he rose from the dead on the third day, he put on an incorruptible body that cannot decay. He rose with a heavenly body. That's why he could go through walls and suddenly appear to his disciples in a room that was locked. Jesus had a new body when he rose from the dead. And all of us who believe in him, we also have a similar body when we rise from the dead, as we read in verse 40. In order to better understand verse 35 and verse 40, you can take a look at verse 50, which says that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is very important. I want every listener to understand this. Our current bodies will not go to heaven. When we go to heaven, we will have another body which is is incorruptible. Let's now look at verse 51 where Paul is telling us a very important truth. He says that we shall not all die but we shall all be changed. So why did Paul say that we shall not all die? You need to understand that some believers won't die. If Jesus comes back when you're still alive, then you won't die. You will be changed. The believers who are already dead will rise when Jesus comes back. But if you're a believer and you're still alive when Jesus returns, then you will never taste death. We need to understand this. If Jesus were to return today, if he were to return right now as I'm speaking to you, those who believe in him will never go through death. When the trumpet sounds on the return of Jesus, they will be immediately transformed and those who are already dead will rise. That's why verse 51 says that we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. He's talking about all of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's why it's very important to receive Jesus and to get saved. And that's why in the first part of this broadcast, I invited those who want to accept Jesus Christ to call our number because once you accept him and you get saved you become a new creation and if jesus returns while you're still alive you will be transformed and you will never face death and if you already dead by the time he returns then you and all the other believers from all the corners of the earth will go to be with him verse 52 gives a detailed account of what will happen on that day the trumpet will sound many times and at the last trumpet in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. The dead in Christ and the believers who will still be alive will all get a new incorruptible body. The dead will rise with a new incorruptible body and this will all happen in a split of a second in the twinkling of an eye. Verse 53 says that this corruptible body must be on incorruption. It means that there will be a transformation and we will get new bodies because our current bodies can't go to heaven. That's why we need an incorruptible body that can go to heaven. This is a very important topic and God willing, I will continue to explain it on Monday. I wish you all a great weekend. May I am bless you. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.